every once in a while, I encounter an artist who is so unique, their style is unmistakable. As a guitarist, I can listen to just a single phrase from someone like Jerry Garcia, even if it's from a song I've never heard, and I know it's him. How does someone, with all the millions of artists out there, create such a distinct and original style? Photography is no different, and recently I encountered a photographer whose style was so distinct that I had never seen anyone like it. This photographer is Pep Ventosa. Alaska Brian here, and welcome back to The Last Frontier. Born in Spain in 1957, Pep Ventosa is a photographer whose unique style has garnered him international attention and recognition. His trademark technique involves taking multiple exposures of a subject and carefully overlaying them to create an impressionistic image that is full of life and movement. He often photographs iconic subjects, such as the Empire State Building, or the Brooklyn Bridge. But some of my favorite images of his were ones whose subject was not so dramatic, but more in tune with the everyday, such as a tree or a phone booth. His series, Trees in the Round, is what I was originally exposed to, and I knew when I saw it that I wanted to attempt his technique for myself and try to put my own spin on it. As with my previous examination of inspirations such as Alexei Titorenko and Trent Park, I wanted to take Ventosa's style and see how I could put my own spin on it. But this multi-exposure technique is not easy and quite time-consuming. To get to a single final image, you must take dozens of photos, edit each of them separately, then painstakingly overlay them. Nothing in the final result is random, and if you don't pay careful attention to detail, the style can quickly get away from you and start to look messy. I found when going about in my hometown looking for subjects for this style of shot that it takes a different eye to imagine what might work, and I admit that quite a few attempts fell on their faces. Some of them, however, I felt quite happy with, and I thought the result provided exactly the thing I'm always looking for with my photography. Images that stand apart is something a little different, something that could not have been a mere snapshot taken by anyone with the camera on their phone. Let me know which of these, if any, you like in the comments. Pep Ventosa is a master. His images are unique and unmistakable. They're beautiful, intriguing, groundbreaking. For me, they represent the best side of digital photography. He doesn't create something fake that never existed, but instead presents familiar scenes in a way they've never been experienced before. When you see one of his images, you know exactly who created it. It's either Pep Ventosa or someone like me trying to emulate his technique, but never quite rising to the same level.
So now I'm going to show a brief demonstration of the technique to give you an idea how I create a Pepfentosa style image. This is not a comprehensive tutorial, more like a rough introduction. The style requires some proficiency in Photoshop with layers, blending, and layer masks. In the future, I might make a more detailed tutorial on how to edit this style of image. The first step is finding an interesting subject. As you've seen from the examples, many things can work. Things I look for are subjects that can achieve separation from their surroundings, usually by color or contrast. Trees and fall plumage work great. They're like one of Ventosa's image, a bright red phone booth. Picking the subject is where some of your individual creativity comes in, and that's part of what makes this style fun. In the field, I photograph my subject multiple times from as many angles as I can. Pep Ventosa named his series Trees in the Round because he would walk all the way around a tree, taking images of it from all angles. I usually aim for about a dozen images, but it can work even with quite a few less. At least seven or eight seems to give the best results. Once you have your raw images, you'll need to bring them into Photoshop. I start with the one I think is the best composition. This will function as my base layer. I edit this image much like I would any other, though I often add quite a bit more contrast and selective saturation. However, this might entirely depend on your final goal with the piece. Once I've edited the base image as I like, I copy the edit settings so I can paste them onto the next layers. It is important for blending that all of the layers are as consistent as possible with things like lighting, temperature, color saturation, and grading. Now with my favorite composition as the base layer, I bring all other images in as layers, setting their opacity to 20% and using the transform tool to align the subject as best as I am able. Once all the images are aligned, I go through each layer using layer masks to eliminate details that don't work for my vision of the final image. This could include things like power lines or high contrast areas that could make the final result look messy. But once again, your own creative vision is all that matters in what you want to include and what you don't. Once I've carefully edited each layer, paying close attention to details, I flatten the image, and it might be done. Usually, however, I like to finish the image off with some color or contrast adjustments. And usually with the Orton effect, which gives the image a soft, dreamy, fantasy-like glow. There are many ways to do the Orton effect, but I usually create a stamp of the image, give it a hefty Gaussian blur, then add contrast, exposure, and saturation. With that layer on top, I set its opacity at 15 or 20%. As you can see, the Orton effect gives your final image that polish, which I happen to like. After this, I might do any last fine tuning I think the final image needs.
And that's it. As you can see, it's a tedious, time-consuming method, but there are lots of ways to express your own individual creativity, and that's what makes it fun. Finding artists that inspire you to try new techniques and artists you can learn from is crucial to growing as an artist of any sort. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one over here where I explore four other photographers who've inspired me to attempt a new photography project that is quite a bit different than my normal landscapes. Until next time, stay interesting and stay wild.